to the Yukon Accelerated Second Degree Sign BS Information Session. I'm Dr. Nancy Manister, Director of the program. The Sign BS program is located on four different campuses. We run the same exact program on each campus at the same exact time. Our Avery Point campus is 16 miles from the Rhode Island border. Our Stanford campus is less than 10 miles from the Westchester County, New York border. And then we have a Storrs campus and a Waterbury campus. And each campus has its own unique feeling. Good news for out-of-state residents, there is no difference in tuition for the program, whether you're in-state or out-of-state, the cost for the Sign BS program is the same. So this is an accelerated second degree program that runs for 12 months. It's designed for those who have a bachelor's degree in a non-nursing field, and at the end of the program, the candidate receives a second bachelor's degree, this time in nursing from the University of Connecticut. We recognize the achievements and previously earned credits that students bring to this program. This is a great time to be a nurse. There are lots of nurses retiring. In fact, one in five nurses will retire soon. The average age of a nurse in Connecticut is 52 years old and it's higher than the national average. There is an increase in healthcare jobs, and we have a rapidly aging population that will be in need of higher acuity health care. So as I said, this program takes 12 months. It's a full-time only program. We start in January of each year, and students graduate mid-December. They receive a bachelor's degree from the University of Connecticut in nursing and also a certificate in nursing. This makes the candidate eligible to take the NCLEX exam, which is the state licensing exam for nurses in the United States. Our application system is open from the middle of November to about July 15th. And I'll explain more about the applications at the end of this presentation. So why choose UConn? Besides being a nationally ranked university, the Sign BS program has graduated over 1,000 students. Our name has undergone a number of changes. Uh, we started out as a master's entry into nursing program and then a certificate program, and now we're best known as an accelerated second degree program where students are well recognized by employers in the area as well as outside of this area. We are CCNE accredited, which is critical to being able to take the NCLEX exam. Only students who have attended a CCNE accredited program for a bachelor's degree can sit for the NCLEX. Our faculty have outstanding mentoring relationships. We mentor our students and we also provide resources to nurses in the community. We have strong links to our facilities and community-based health, uh, healthcare resources. Our NCLEX pass rate is excellent. For this past year, it was 97% across the four campuses. Many of our students have already been offered jobs a month or two before their commencement, and we are very proud of them. Typically, employers reach out to me and ask me if we have students available for jobs. So what is nursing? It is the protection, promotion, and optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis and treatment of human response, and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, communities, and populations. Today, our patients are, are sicker in the hospital, and their stays are shorter. And so that makes the nurse's job harder, that the patients are a higher acuity and need more care. 
And so what we need is smart nurses. Nurses are highly skilled caregivers and they have ever expanding roles and responsibilities in today's healthcare climate. Nurses perform physical examinations and take health histories. They provide health promotion, counseling, and education to clients and their families. They provide medications, wound care, and other personalized in interventions. Nurses interpret patient information and make critical decisions about needed actions. They coordinate care in collaboration with a wide array of other healthcare professionals. They direct and supervise care that is delivered by other healthcare pers personnel, such as LPNs and nurses' aides. And they also conduct research in support of improved practice and patient outcomes. Career opportunities are endless for nurses. Where most nurses do work in hospitals, Many nurses also work in nursing homes, medical offices, clinics, schools, workplaces, specialized institutions, homeless shelters, prisons, sporting events, cruise ships, camps, the armed forces, home and community settings. They also work as forensic nurses, nurse health coaches, managers, counselors, nurse practitioners, nurse anesthetists, educators, researchers, and an endless amount of other options. We see here in the blue that the vast majority of nurses are working in hospitals, but we also see that this role is expanding and that nurses are everywhere in a variety of settings. We also see that in this region of the United States, we see the dark blue on the right side, I guess that's your left side. That salaries are higher in this region, averaging $72,000 to $100,000 a year. So as we said earlier, this program starts once a year in January. Students earn 45 credits over three semesters with 15 credits in each semester. We have two mandatory orientation days in the fall and so I'd like you to think that our program really starts in October. That when you come for your first orientation day in October, that you will go home and start studying eight to 10 hours a week and continue with that until you come to start the program the first week of January. We have a second orientation day that is at the regional campus that you will call home. So classes are one day a week from 8.30 in the morning to 6 p.m. And we do have some hybrid classes, which means that you could, will finish a class at home, perhaps. At this time, the Storrs campus has class on Monday. The Stanford has class on Thursdays. And Avery Point and Waterbury have class on Fridays. Clinical is typically two days per week. So that would be 21 hours a week, divided in two days. However, in the spring semester, students also have a three hour a week lab and so would be attending school four days a week in the spring semester. Any day of the week can be a clinical day from 6 a.m. till midnight. However, the vast majority of our clinicals are Monday through Friday, and on the day shift. You should know your schedule about three to four weeks before your next clinical rotation. Here is an example of a student's schedule. You see that on Sunday, in the first column, the student is preparing for clinical. So that might mean writing your care plan, or writing med cards, or looking up conditions that you might see in clinical. And we see the next day on Monday, this student went to clinical. On Tuesday, this student is preparing for class and we expect that a student will study two to three hours for each credit of the semester per week. 
On Wednesday, this student has clinical resource lab in the morning and has developed a study group with other classmates in the afternoon. On Thursday, the student is studying again, and on Friday, the student is going to class, and Saturday, the student is going to clinical. So where the class day is set, our clinical days can vary, and as I said, you know your schedule three to four weeks in advance of each rotation. We have six different clinical rotations throughout the year. So here are our courses. In the first semester of the program, students take health assessment and fundamentals of nursing. And that is a class that runs from 8.30 in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon, and also includes a three hour lab and two days of clinical. The class that starts from at 3 p.m. and ends at 6 p.m. is PACA Pharmacology for Nursing Practice and that class does not have a clinical. For the summer semester, our rotations are much shorter. So students will have a class running from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on concepts and theories of nursing practice that lasts for about 10 weeks, and then three different clinical rotations. First is behavioral health for five weeks. Then we have a summer intensive week where all of our students have a day of class for perinatal and women's health and a full day of class for child health. And then everyone comes to the Storrs campus for two full days of lab skills and simulations. After that, two campuses will continue with perinatal and women's health and two campuses will have child health for four weeks and then they swap and continue for four more weeks with the other class. And that completes the summer semester. In the fall semester, students have theory and nursing practice for community health at the very end of the year. That's our last four weeks of the year. Our, our first 10 weeks of the semester is theory and nursing practice for acutely ill adults. And the class that's in the afternoon, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., is nursing research and evidence-based practice. And then it's graduation time. The year goes very quickly. So let's go over the schedule again. We start out in October with a mandatory orientation day at the Storrs campus, and then a second orientation day, usually in November, at your home campus. And at this time, you're doing eight to 10 hours a week of studying. We start the first week of January. Students have one week off in March for spring break, and then the spring semester ends usually the third week or the last week in April, and they have two weeks off before the summer semester starts. Our summer semester lasts for 14 weeks and ends giving you two weeks off at the end of August with the fall semester starting the last week of August. Students get a week off for Thanksgiving and then typically come back for two to three weeks and graduate. After graduation, everyone comes back for a three-day live NCLEX review. We are very dedicated to our students passing the NCLEX exam their first time. And so we want to work with you to make sure that you are a success when you take your NCLEX exam. We have a philosophy of using problem-based teaching and learning. And so we use different strategies and content areas to make that happen. So nursing history, culture, health assessment, disease science, information technology, et cetera. We use lots of case studies and interactive exercises, clinical experiences, and we also do a lot of work in the simulation laboratory where it's safe to take care of patients and make mistakes. So what is clinical? It is 
clinical practice experiences as planned learning activities in nursing practice that allow students to understand, perform, and refine professional competencies at the appropriate program level. Clinical practice experiences are not limited to clinical patient care settings. Clinical practice experience also refers to any nursing intervention that influences healthcare outcomes. So when we say that you're going to clinical, that means that you are in a group of six to eight students with one faculty member working with you. We start out the first two weeks of our program in the laboratory, working with mannequins and practicing basic skills. And then we go out to our hospital settings and work with patients with increasing responsibility for total patient care. It's technical as well as cognitive thinking as well as doing. And our goal is to prepare you to be a beginning level practitioner, which is what the National Council of State Boards of Nursing says is the level that nurses should attain when they enter practice. In clinical, you will see patients in patients, that means in the hospital, and in settings outside of the hospital. We see all age groups of patients in long-term care, in behavioral health, in maternal newborn settings, in hot, uh, community and public health, and in critical care. So we guarantee that you will have clinical placement. We do not guarantee a specific site or specific days or hours, but we do try to work with students who have specific limitations to their lives or schedules. We say that your agency can be anywhere within 75 miles of the campus, but traditionally we look at where our, our students live and we try to get you as close to a clinical agency as possible. And so we try not to have our students drive more than an hour to any clinical experience. I have two slides of clinical agencies, so I'll take a minute to let you look at, at these lists. We have many more clinical agencies that we work with that are not on these slides. graduate from the accelerated second degree signed BS program you might want to think about a master's program or even a doctoral degree and so we have those at UConn too. So what are the admission requirements? A bachelor's degree from an accredited institution with an undergraduate GPA of 3.0 or higher we expect that the applicants to our program will graduate from their first baccalaureate degree no later than August before the program starts. We discourage December applicants or December graduates from applying because we feel that our students need the fall semester to get ready to enter the program. We have required science courses with a grade of B or better, undergraduate statistics with a grade of C or better. We need every official transcript from every college or university that you ever attended, even if you think that that transcript does not matter. The application system that we use will hold all of your transcripts and your application from moving forward to us if you are missing any transcript, even if it's a class that you took when you were in high school, but it was at the college level. We need your current curriculum vitae or resume, and three references. One should be academic, 
one professional, and the third can be either academic or professional. But no personal references, please. If you were not born in the United States, or you did not attend high school in the United States, you might need a TOEFL exam. So we expect that, that a TOEFL would be required if high school and college was not attended in the United States. So starting with the class of 2019, all prerequisite courses except for genetics must be within the last eight years of application to the program and human genetics must be taken within five years of application to the program. So for example, if a student is applying to the class of 2020, a genetics course would be taken 2014 or more recently, or a biology course could be taken in 2011 or more recently. I'd like to go through our required science courses and describe some of the little important points to consider when you are applying. So as I said, you need a B or better in college level courses a B minus will not be accepted. For human anatomy and physiology one and two, those labs need to be in person. Same for chemistry. For biology, we do not require a lab. However, biology with a lab is sometimes a prerequisite for anatomy and physiology. And so it's important to know where you're taking your anatomy and physiology before signing up for a biology course. Microbiology and human genetics do not require a lab, but many courses are offered with a lab. If you are not sure if a course that you have taken is acceptable, you can go to our accepted courses list on the SIGNBS website and look for the list, but also you can see this link to uh, analyzing transfer courses if you took a class in any Connecticut school, it will tell you what level your course will transfer in as. You can also email the syllabus from your course to sign, C-E-I-N, at uconn.edu. If you have not taken a course and want to know if it will meet our prerequisite requirements, you can talk to us in, in advance of taking that class. So let's go over some of these classes in more detail. So for anatomy and physiology one and two, a total of eight credits with labs is expected. The labs cannot be online. If there are separate grades for the class and lab portion, you have to earn at least a B or better in both class and lab. So we will not average grades. For example, if you have a C in lab and an A in the class, that might average to a B, but we don't accept that. The, the grade must be B for both, or higher. Content must be about human anatomy and physiology, not animal anatomy and physiology, and must be within the last eight years. For chemistry, it's four credits. Lab is required and cannot be online. Our rule about grades is the same as anatomy and physiology. If there are separate grades for the class and lab portion, you must earn at least a B or better in both class and lab. The content must be equivalent or higher than Chem 1122 at UConn. So here's the description of that class here. And again, please feel free to email us a syllabus if you have questions regarding whether it meets our course requirements. This class must be taken within the last eight years. Biology can be three or four credits. A three credit biology class would not include a lab. A four credit class would have the lab. Again, make sure you know where you're taking anatomy and physiology before you take your biology class. If there are separate grades for the class and the lab, you have to achieve a grade of B or better in the class. We will not look at the lab grade. The 
the equivalent course is Biology 1107 at UConn. And this course must be taken within the last eight years. For microbiology, it can be three or four credits. No lab is required. And here is the content for microbiology that you would want to match up to. If there are separate grades for the class and lab, you must have a B or better in the class grade. We will not record the lab grade, and it must be within the last eight years. For human genetics, three or four credits, no lab required, must be taken within the last five years. This class can be taken online. The content has to be human genetics. And if there are separate grades for the class and lab, you must achieve a B or better in the class grade. The lab grade will not be recorded. For statistics, it can be three or four credits, uh, a C or better in college level statistics. And it must be the equivalent of statistics 1000Q or 1100Q at UConn. A class that is split between biostatistics and research is not acceptable. It must be a full semester of statistics and taken within the last eight years. For our program, we expect computer and writing literacy. Each student must have their own laptop to bring to class. A tablet is not acceptable. We take exams and perform other functions on laptops in class. Here's more information about the TOEFL exam. So permanent residents of the United States who attended English-speaking U.S. schools beginning in the ninth grade are waived from this requirement. Applicants born and educated in an English-speaking country, such as Canada, except for Quebec, Australia, United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, and New Zealand are usually waived from taking the TOEFL exam. However, in countries where dialects are often spoken, a TOEFL will be required. Passing scores are critical. A total of 92 must be achieved. However, there must be a minimum of 26 in both listening and speaking, and a minimum of 20 in reading and writing. The TOEFL must be taken within two years of application to the program. Please upload an official copy of your scores to your application in the CAS system. Foreign transcripts must also be officially evaluated by a company such as WES, W-E-S. For the letters of recommendation, as I said earlier, you need three, one academic, one professional, and the third of your choice. No personal recommendations. Your letters should recommend your background, independence, perseverance, potential for academic success, ability to balance academic workload, flexibility, potential as a nurse, and ability to successfully work independently and in groups. Please follow the directions in the CAS system. Start early to get your letters of recommendation. These can take time. We also expect that you will write a personal statement. This is in addition to questions and answers in the CAS system. Tell us about yourself. Talk about why you want to be a nurse and what influenced your decision. Write about qualities you have that will contribute to your success in the program and in nursing. Relate some of your work and life experiences to nursing and describe your short and long-term goals. We suggest a length of about 500 to 1,000 words. You might want to write that on a word processor and then cut and paste it into your application. When you're ready to apply, you'll use the nursing CAS system. As I said earlier, allow extra time for references and transcripts to be completed and uploaded. After you complete your application, make sure that you go back and check that your references and transcripts are there. If your references and transcripts are not there, your application will not be reviewed. 
There were two application fees, one directly to CAS for $50, and then a separate application fee of $75 that must be mailed directly to UConn by check. And here is the address. More about admissions. So you'll submit all of your college transcripts to CAS so that your academic record can be evaluated. Make sure that you check back that all of your transcripts have been uploaded and references completed. Any missing documents will prevent review of your application. So admissions applications are reviewed on a rolling basis starting in about February. The earlier you apply, the greater the chance that you will have your first campus choice. When you complete your application, you'll tell us your first campus choice and then your second or perhaps your third. We try very hard to get our students onto the campus that they would prefer to attend. Plan to have your application ready to go by July 15th. However, let me talk about why it might not be complete by then. So we know that some students have prerequisite courses that they are completing in the summer. We say that you can have one or two prerequisites left to take when you apply. But for summer applicants, we know that grades for summer courses might not be ready till the end of August. And so for July applicants, you can submit your application with four prerequisite courses outstanding as long as you will be finishing two of those courses in the summer. So submit your proof of enrollment for any outstanding prerequisite courses by uploading documentation into the applicant loaded documents section in CAS. Proof of enrollment can be a bursar's receipt or a screenshot of your course schedule. All courses must be completed by December prior to the January start. Once a prerequisite class is completed, an official transcript must be uploaded to CAS or sent directly to the Admissions and Enrollment Services Office at the UConn School of Nursing. So here's an example for you. If you are taking two prerequisite summer classes that will not be finished until the end of August and still have two courses to take in the fall, submit your application by July 15th with proof of enrollment for all four of those missing classes. Upload a letter of explanation with proof of enrollment for the classes. Now this application will be held for a review until final grades for the two summer classes are submitted to the AES office and uploaded to CAS. However, we can start looking at references and other aspects of your application and be ready for those final grades to come in at the end of August. So as I've said, all applicants are submitted through the Nursing Centralized Admission Service. Here's the link, www.nursingcast.org. For prerequisites that are not completed, upload proof of registration for courses and submit course grades. So for your official transcripts, we need every single one. Don't forget that part. You can mail transcripts directly to CAS at the address on the screen, or you can send them electronically. However, we only accept parchment or credential solutions as electronic transcript couriers. Once accepted into the SignBS program, payment of a $1,000 deposit is required. This holds your seat for the program. This deposit will then be applied to your first semester's tuition. The deposit is non-refundable. So for financial aid, here's the phone number if you'd like to call and ask questions. Students entering the SignBS program are considered fifth-year students 
not graduate students. And so fill out a FAFSA form before registering for classes, and that will be used for your spring semester. And then in the spring, a second FAFSA form is completed and used for summer and fall semesters to complete financial aid calculations. There are some scholarships available. However, these would be for the summer and fall semesters only. There are no scholarships for the spring semester. For 2019, the cost of the program is estimated at $35,428. We expect that it will be slightly higher for 2020 applicants. This does not include university fees, equipment, uniforms, books, travel, criminal background checks, and other miscellaneous costs. And remember, tuition is the same in or out of state. That's great for New York and Rhode Island applicants. There's a non-refundable deposit of $1,000 applied towards your tuition. University fees are generally not high, and they're set by the University of Connecticut. You can expect that your equipment and uniforms will cost about $320 and include two sets of uniforms, a stethoscope, blood pressure cuff, pen light, etc. Only approved Yukon uniforms may be worn. Lab supplies are included in your fees. However, you can expect that your books will cost about $1,900 for the year. Parking at UConn is approximately $110 for the year. Additionally, you will be expected to pay for parking and travel to your clinical sites, and that is dependent on the site that you are attending. There is a small fee that is paid for a criminal background check, fingerprinting, and drug screening. We expect that students will have reliable transportation to attend varied clinical sites. We would like to emphasize that Uber, trains, and buses would not be reliable means of transportation to clinical. Other requirements. Certification in CPR as a healthcare provider for both adults and children. A criminal background check that we organize drug testing, and possible fingerprinting. We also would like you to know that drug testing may be repeated during the academic year based on clinical agency requirements. Use of drugs, prescribed or otherwise, may create a risk of being denied a clinical placement. This includes, but is not limited to, prescribed medical marijuana or opiates. If the findings of a required drug screening prevent you from being placed in a clinical agency for your experience, you will not be able to complete the nursing program. If you have any concerns about your current prescriptions in relation to securing a clinical placement, please contact your health care provider. Students must meet all health requirements in order to go to clinical. And these are our health requirements. You must have a physical exam within 12 months of the start date must have proof of vaccination for tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis within the last 10 years, an annual flu vaccine, so typically August or September of the year before you enter, and that is repeated again during the program. Hepatitis B vaccination can take a lot of time, and so please pay attention closely here. Each student must submit proof of three doses of hepatitis B vaccine and also a titer, a blood test, that is positive for immunity. Polio, three or four dose series, that's usually a childhood series with the fourth dose coming after age four. Or you can have a booster or a positive blood test titer. We ask for a two-step test for tuberculosis, which is called a PPD, where you go and have the test planted in your arm and then read 48 to 72 hours later, 
and then repeated two to three weeks later. Or you could have a blood test, such as a Quantiferin gold test, and not have the two-step tests. If you are a positive reactor, you would not get tested and submit an x-ray. So blood drawn for titers would be measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, and hepatitis B. If any titer is negative, so not positive for immunity, we expect that you would be revaccinated and then your titers repeated at the prescribed time. For hepatitis B, this can take extra time. We also want to mention that our clinical agencies might add any other tests at any time and we would have to be compliant. So again, to emphasize the importance of getting your hepatitis B screening done early, you must have a titer that shows positive immunity to hepatitis B. It can take up to five months to revaccinate if you are negative. Please get this done by June or July before coming to the program. If a titer is negative, get a booster and check immunity again within six weeks and most students would need to have three additional doses, which can take months. All right, so I said earlier we have two full orientation days, one in October at the Storrs campus and then the second one at your regional campus. How competitive is the program? It's fairly competitive. Can you attend part-time? The answer is no. This is a full-time, one-year program. Can you work during the program? We strongly discourage our students from working because you are competing against people who are not working. And so the more a student works, the harder it is for them to be academic, academically successful. Does UConn provide housing? Not for the signed BS program but you might reach out to other students in the program and share an apartment during the year. So, talk with your family and arrange time for you to immerse yourself in studies. Support from your family and friends is probably the most important success factor for this program. Do you need more information? If you do, you can call our Admissions and Enrollment Services Office at 860-486-1937 or email at sign at uconn.edu. If you have specific questions about our health requirements, you can email sonclinical at uconn.edu and we will return your email and answer your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening about the accelerated second degree signed BS program at UConn. We hope to see you.